Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, thank you so much for stopping by. My name is Ashley. I have an eight month old son named Grayson. And yes, I know it has taken me a long time to make this video because it's a newborn must haves video and my kid's eight months old. That's parented, man. I don't know what happened, but he's eight months old. So to make this video easier to understand, I have broken it down into five categories. So we're going to talk about health and wellness, gear and activities, feeding, things babies wear, and also nursery items. So hopefully that will be easier for you guys to follow. There is a lot of things to talk about in this video. I am hopefully going to clarify some things for you and give you more budget friendly options. I will talk about a couple higher dollar things as well but I'm not gonna tell you that you need to spend $1,000 on a bassinet because you don't, okay? So let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so we are starting off with gear and activity. The first thing I'm going to talk about is a travel system. What a travel system entails is a car seat, a stroller, and a car seat base. So I would definitely recommend to purchase the travel system. There are a ton of different brands out there, a ton of different price ranges out there. Um, they are all going to be fine for your baby. Buy whichever one you think is going to work best for you. We purchased the Chico KeyFit 30 um, car seat travel system. I will link it below. Um, and we have loved it, loved it, loved it, loved it. The car seat, um, has been outgrown. It only goes up to 30 inches tall and Grayson is over 30 inches tall and he's over the maximum weight for the car seat because he is a big boy. Um, but I would still recommend it. The stroller is phenomenal. Um, you just plop the car seat right into the stroller. Super, super nice. Um, the stroller is going to work for him for many years to come. It's a really nice stroller. Um, like I said, it does come with a car seat base. I would highly recommend to purchase a second car seat base. If you and your significant other or a family member are going to be the ones who are responsible for driving baby from point A to point B, um, highly recommend getting a second car seat base so that you don't have to put in the base and the car seat. Anytime you're going somewhere, you can just plop the car seat right into the base and it clicks in and that will make your life so much easier guys. Okay, so the next thing we're gonna talk about is a diaper bag. You are going to need a diaper bag of some shape or form. Um, we have a diaper bag that is the backpack diaper bag and then we also have one that's an off the shoulder diaper bag for daycare. I like them both. With the diaper bag, I would just highly recommend that you have a lot of pockets and a lot of zippers to put your stuff. That's really all you need. You can go buy one from Walmart. That's 20 bucks, 30 bucks. Um, ours was 80 and it's probably just as nice as a $20 one. So whatever you want, I would not recommend to buy a super, super expensive diaper bag because that thing is gonna be put through the ringer. You are also going to need some sort of swing. So we had purchased the Mamaru swing for Grayson. I would not recommend buying a super expensive swing. Babies generally don't really care about the type of swing they are in. Um, if they go to daycare eventually, they're gonna just be put in a basic swing. They're not gonna have a super, super expensive swing at daycare. Um, Grayson would have just enjoyed a plain swing. Although we will use the Mama Roo swing um, for our future children if we have them, um, hopefully get our money's worth out of it, but he didn't really care for it that much. The next thing you're gonna need is some sort of bouncer. Yes, a swing and a bouncer. They're different things completely. Our bouncer came with our bassinet. I know there's a lot of people who recommend the Baby Bjorn bouncer um, because it's, it's much more flexible, yeah. so yeah, you can get that one if you want, or you can just get a basic one if you're on a budget. It doesn't really matter. You can get a bouncer for like 30 bucks. So if you're on a budget, 
go that route. Your baby's probably not going to care. Um, one thing to note, some bouncers do come with like a vibration setting. I would recommend that if that is an option for you. The next thing you're gonna need is a co-sleeper or a portable bassinet. We had the Snuggle Me Organic co-sleeper to use for him to nap wherever we were, and it was okay. It's expensive. Um, I talked about this in one of my other videos, but he always peed through his diaper when he was in the Snuggle Me Organic. Um, so next time I am definitely going to get either a Moses basket or just a portable bassinet. You can get them really cheap at Walmart for like 30 bucks, 40 bucks. Um, instead of spending like 130, 180 on some sort of fancy co-sleeper, just get a portable bassinet. You should be good to go. Okay, the next thing is a sound machine. We have two of these glorious sound machines. Um, these are by Project Nursery, very inexpensive. You can get them on Amazon. I will link it below. Um, we just, just do yourself a favor, hook one of these bad boys onto your car seat and leave it there. That way you don't forget it. You can just hook it on, leave it there, you're good to go. It takes batteries, it will last a long time. It can play a lot of different sounds for you. Like I said, we have two of these. We also do our um, smart home devices, so we can play music on those, play rain sounds on those. If by chance I ever forgot one of these, I just put my phone next to him and played rain sounds, but these are really easy. The last gear and activity item I'm going to talk about is the flower mat bathtub. These retail for $39.99. Um, however, you can find them at TJ Maxx or Ross or Marshalls for like 20 bucks or even cheaper. So um, basically what it is, is it's a squishy mat to um, be able to give your newborn a bath. So a majority of us are going to bathe our newborn in our sink. And so what's really nice about this flower bathtub, mat, whatever you want to call it, is that it will mold to the shape of your sink if that's what you want to use, or you can just lay it flat in your bathtub and give baby a bath that way. It's going to be much more comfortable for them than laying just in the plain sink where it's cold and hard. Um, so I would highly recommend that. Okay, moving on, we are going to talk about health and wellness. I have got to talk about this first. This is like my favorite thing we've bought, aside from cloth diapers. Um, this is the Owlet Smart Sock. It is a glorious piece of technology. It monitors baby's heart rate and respiration. And my friend, this is going to let you sleep. You still ain't sleeping that great, but you're gonna at least sleep with this thing. Um, essentially, it's a smart sock, so it's kind of like a baby Fitbit. You just strap it onto their foot. The sock itself comes with three different sizes. Um, we're currently with Grayson on the biggest size, and it has started to rip a little bit, but you can buy replacement socks for pretty inexpensive. This guy's expensive. I would highly recommend that you make it known that you need this. And hopefully friends and family can come together and purchase this item for you. It is going to change your life. Um, there is an app that you can connect to on your phone. You can watch the baby's heart rate and respiration in live time, in real time. Um, guys, this is it. This is everything you need this outlet sock. Okay, moving on. That is like one of my favorite things. Okay, next. You are going to need some sort of diapers. We have experimented with so many different types and brands. The Huggies diapers, this one in particular is the Snug and Dry, but I have found with the Huggies, I don't really care which type of Huggies it is, but all of the Huggies brands, brand, 
work really well. They're very absorbent. They are very moldable. They mold the shape of your baby. Um, you're gonna get a better fit with them. Really, really love the Huggies diapers. We use cloth diapers now, I'm just saying. Cloth diapers are amazing. I have videos coming out um, talking about cloth diapers. If you want a newborn cloth diaper your baby, I would definitely recommend that, unfortunately. We got started late in the game with cloth diapers, but anyway, I'm going off on a tangent. You need diapers of some sort. Alongside of diapers, you need wipes. These are the water wipes. And I know guys, these are gonna be more expensive than other types of wipes, but I truly believe they are worth it. Grayson had eczema from the get-go, um, and the poor guy, we have, we have really been through it with him, with his eczema and diaper rash, and really just trying to find things that work for him. So if you've got a little one with very sensitive skin, the water wipes are really gonna be so worth it um, to know that there's not a whole bunch of nastiness that's going to be on your baby when you're wiping them like this. This is just water and a little bit of fruit extract. It's not gonna leave any sticky residue on your baby. It's gonna be amazing. If you have an Amazon account, sign these up for subscribe and save and you can save up to 20 percent um, through that highly recommend that's what we do subscribe and save we also use cloth wipes at this point with him um, but that's a whole other thing so moving on guys you need aquaphor this is going to be one of your best friends. You need one for your diaper bag. You need one stationed throughout the house for anything. You can use this um, for diaper rash, for eczema, for cuts, scrapes, dry skin. Guys, lotions don't work, okay? This is going to be the best thing ever. So many uses for this. I cannot say enough. Get, your, get you some Aquaphor. Seriously, you need it. The next thing you're gonna need is some sort of baby butt cream. So this is the Boudreaux's butt paste, the natural one with aloe. The red one is very popular. We have that one too. This one is going to be more cloth diaper friendly. Um, I'm also experimenting with other diaper creams. You don't have to buy a specific one, just get a diaper cream you will need it because your baby probably will get diaper rash at some point. Okay, the next thing I'm gonna talk about is a booger sucker. Let's talk about the nose frida first, and then I have another option for you if you don't want to physically suck the boogers out of your kid's nose, which I don't. So, yes, the nose frida works. You take the red end, you put it in your mouth, you take the blue end, put it up your baby's nose, and then you suck the boogers out. Um, yes, this thing works. There's a filter in here, so it's not gonna get in your mouth. I physically, I just can't do it. Um, a couple things I don't like about this. This is hard, like this is hard plastic. It's not malleable, it's not soft. That thing is like not gonna be comfortable for your kid. And also the, the opening or the tip, is pretty big and it's not gonna comfor comfortably fit in a newborn's nose, but it does work. Josh swears by it. He loves the nose Frida. I'm just not a fan, <laughs> but you need some sort of nose sucker. This one is the one that I like to use. It's got a very flexible tip. I know this is gonna be hard to see. It's got a flexible tip. And the tip part is very small so that it's going to fit up your baby's nose and it's not gonna be like a super hard piece of plastic. And you literally just stick it up there and suck the boogers out. Really great, we have like three of these kind and they're my favorite. You can get them in a two pack at Walmart. Definitely recommend those. Next thing you're gonna need is some nail clippers of some sort. I would not recommend getting the fancy ones with like the curved clipper part. These are just your standard nail clippers that are flat. Um, 
and these ones work the best for me. The other kind are just like really hard for me to use. Um, I really like this kind the best. You might want a nail file or something to go with that. Okay, moving on. Some sort of thermometer. So the hospital is going to give you a thermometer most likely. Um, you can stick it up your baby's bum or insert it under their armpit to take their temperature. Um, the one that you stick up the butt, like the hospital is going to give you, is also good to help stimulate the rectum if they are um, experiencing some sort of constipation. That's a whole other, other topic. But these are fantastic. This is the kind where you literally just hold it up to their forehead and it will get the temperature that way. Um, this was $14.99 at TJ Maxx, um, but you can get it on Amazon. I will link one below. Highly recommend getting a thermometer um, that you don't have to stick up your baby's butt because not everyone wants to do that. Okay, speaking of sticking something up your baby's butt, I have this. This is the Frida Baby, um, the gas passer. So this is what you use when your baby is struggling with gas. I have tried gripe water, we've tried gas drops, um, we've tried massaging him, doing the bicycle with the legs. Um, this little thing was one of the only things that really worked and so what you do is you massage baby's belly to like move the gas bubbles down you lube this up and this is the end that you stick up the bum and it's hollow in the middle you can see better on this side it's hollow and basically it like releases the gas and you will hear it happen you need to be prepared um, with a diaper like underneath them because they might go poop. Um, it has happened many times where I stuck that up his bum and um, he pooped. So just make sure you're prepared for that. It does say on the packaging, prepare for a mess. And yes, you do need to prepare for a mess, but I highly recommend um, these are fantastic. We use them a lot and if you are worried about sticking something up your baby's butt, this has got a stopper on it, so you're not gonna stick it up too far. Just make sure you lube it up for them so it's more comfortable. Um, yeah. Okay, last thing on my list, or not last two things on my list for health and wellness would just be some sort of towel for a baby um, for bath time. You don't need the hooded towels, although those are totally fine. We do have hooded towels um, for Grayson now. He's so huge that we just use our regular towel washed in baby detergent um, and you will need a baby detergent. I used the Dreft detergent. There are tons of baby detergents out there. Whatever one you want to use is fine. Okay. Those are my health and wellness items. Let's move on to the next category. Okay, the next category we are talking about is feeding. But I forgot to mention body wash slash shampoo for your baby. This was hiding over here in my bucket of stuff. This is the Honest brand. Um, use whatever brand you want. We've used several different brands. Just make sure it's like natural for baby. This has got the little pump action, which makes it nice, but you need some sort of body wash, shampoo combo, whatever for baby. Okay, so for your feeding supplies, we are not going to get into the whole breastfeeding formula debate situation conversation. That will be another video. This is a burp cloth. <laughs> Regardless of if you formula feed or breastfeed, you will need a burp cloth for your baby. Um, I will link these. I got these from Amazon. These are 100% cotton, and these are my absolute favorite. Um, I would highly recommend these over any other brand, any other type. Um, you can throw it over your shoulder. It's going to be really nice. Um, right now, Grayson's kind of a beast child and so we just like wrap it around his neck because he gets like the the milk drool happening when he's eating um this is gonna be just so so good for you 
burp cloth you need no matter what type of feeding you are doing for baby. Okay, um, the next thing is a pacifier. So this one's gonna be hard to see because it's clear. This is a size two pacifier and the brand is Evenflow. Um, we have the size one of these and the size two. We used a couple different types, but this is the one I really liked. Um, I like it because it's clear and it matches everything. Um, and I like the shape of it. Um, I like the little handle part of it. It's just really nice. So we have a ton of these. They're on Amazon. It's a pack of six for $9.99. Um, those worked really well for us. Just a little side note. Yes, all babies are different. Some babies will not take a pacifier. Some babies will only take a specific brand or type of pacifier. Grayson was not super picky, but he did like that one. Um, I would not recommend going out there and buying 50 of the same pacifier before your baby's even born. Um, try a couple different brands, see what works for you, and then once you know that A, your baby's gonna take a passy, and B, like that specific one, then you can go buy more of that. Okay, moving on, bottles. So, we did a combination of breastfeeding, bottle feeding, and formula feeding, and um, needless to say, we use bottles the Dr. Brown's bottles are my favorite. So all bottles, it's going to be standard. It shows um, the ounces on there, how many mils, whatever. The Dr. Brown's ones are advertised as like um, to help reduce colic and gas and fussiness. Um, they've got all this stuff on the inside here, which is supposed to trap the bubbles and basically reduce the amount of bubbles that your baby is drinking. Um, the nipples are really nice. They're solid. Um, on a couple of the other brands, Grayson would like suck with so much pressure that it would like push the nipple in. I don't know, but these ones held up. These are really great. Okay, for bottles. I forgot to grab some of my stuff, but I will just tell you, you need stuff to wash the bottles. So a wand of some sort to wash um, the bottle. You need the pieces to wash inside of the nipples and all of the parts just go over to the part of the store that's got all of the bottles and the bottle washing stuff and, and get yourself a wand. Um, the Walmart brand ones, the parent's choice are like $1.99 I think, and they work really well. Um, they work just fine for us. So you are probably going to need a bottle drying rack. Um, these ones are really popular. It comes in white as well. Um, we also have the Munchkin one where it like is just made for like the bottles and the nipples. We use it. I don't like it. I would definitely recommend getting another one of these. So we have this and then I bought like a tree for it and we actually I put all of like the necks of the, I don't know, let me show you. This is the part that we put on the tree. So I take out the nipple and then this part here, like the neck of the bottle is what I actually put on the tree. So you will need one of those. Okay, and then the last feeding thing is a bottle sanitizer. So a steam st sanitizer, st steam sterilizer. Um, this is the Avent one. Um, if you don't want to go out and buy one of these, your hospital will probably send you home with some of the bags that you can microwave um, to sterilize all of your breastfeeding or your pump parts and your bottle parts. Um, I believe this was like 30 bucks, 20 or 30 bucks for this. So you will need some sort of sterilizer um, to clean your bottles. Okay, that's all I've got for feeding. Okay, the next category we're going to talk about is things that your baby wears. So clothing items. There are several things you're gonna wanna consider. We'll just start from top to bottom. Okay, so hats. 
especially if your baby is a winter baby, you are going to want to purchase hats of some sort for your baby. Just make sure they're nice and stretchy and comfortable. Um, if you live in a super cold place, make sure that they're going to be warm for your baby. The next thing you're going to want to consider is onesies. This is obviously a giant onesie for my giant baby. Um, this is a onesie. You can purchase a long sleeve onesie or a short sleeve onesie, depending on the time of year. So definitely take that into consideration when you are purchasing clothing for your child. Is, is it in the middle of the summer? Is it going to be in the middle of the winter? You need to consider that because if it's going to be super cold, you're going to want long sleeve onesies. If it's super warm, you're going to want short sleeve onesies or tank tops or something of the sort. As far as how many you need, kind of depends on you and how often you want to have to do laundry. I would say like bare minimum, you're going to need like six to eight onesies. And then six to eight sleepers. Um, that's just, it's just really personal preference. Six to eight, I would say is bare minimum. So those are your onesies. With the onesies, you can buy shorts or pants, whatever you want with that. The next thing is a sleeper. And holy cow, you guys, sleepers are going to be your best friend. This is a sleeper. So a couple things to note with this sleeper in particular, aside from the stainage that we've got going on here. This is a sleeper for a bigger baby. Um, I think this is, let's see, this is a six to nine month sleeper. Um, this is the brand Cloud Island, which is sold at Target. These are one of my favorite sleepers. Highly recommend you can get a three pack of these for $12.99. These ones have the fold over sleeves, so like the kind of mittens all the way up until this size, which is so rare to find this. Most of the newborn stuff will have the folds over mittens, but once you hit that three month size, it's very rare to find this. So this brand has it all the way up to the nine month onesies. Another thing to note, you've got your little feetsies attached, so that's gonna be nice. If you've got a summer baby, you might not want feet on it, but I don't think it matters. Um, and then these ones zip up from the bottom up, which is really nice for diaper changes. You don't have to unzip the top to change the diaper in the middle of the night, just zips up from the bottom. And they're super cute. So your baby, your newborn is going to be in sleepers a lot because it's just so much easier. Um, you just lay it flat, open it up, and then you can, it's just a lot easier to change them into a sleeper than it is a onesie. So I would highly re recommend sleepers, especially if you're packing your hospital bag. Um, definitely recommend bringing some sleepers. These are like one of my definite, definite must-haves, sleepers. Um, moving down, socks. You are gonna need socks, my friend. Um, if you're, unless you're using this specific sleeper all of the time, which already has the footsies and the mittens attached, you're gonna want socks for your baby. So socks for their hands and socks for their feet. Um, the mittens, guys, do not work. They are gonna be too big for a newborn's hands and they're just gonna fall right off. So get you some socks to put on their little hands, don't forget to pack those in your hospital bag. Um, Grayson, we packed one pair of mittens for the hospital bag and he threw up on them um, the first time he wore them. So they were dirty in the hospital and I was like, oh my God, what do I do? And the nurse was like, just put his socks on his hands. And I was like, oh my God, that is such a great idea. Never use mittens again because they fall off. What a waste. Okay, so those are your clothing items. Um, moving on. Receiving blankets. Guys, oh, these are a lifesaver. I believe they're made out of like fleece and cotton. I'm not sure. Um, so many uses for receiving blankets. 
I would put one of these in your diaper bag to lay down when you're changing baby, especially if it's cold outside, so that it's a nice, like, comfortable thing for them to be laying on. This is also going to be great to put on top of your changing pad because you know newborns poop a lot, a lot, and you're going to have a lot of messes. So it's going to be easier for you to clean up if they just poop on this and stayed up their changing pad. Um, also, they're a blanket, so... You can never have too many blankets, my friends. Yes. Okay, moving on. Along that same line, this is a muslin swaddle blanket, muslin blanket, whatever, um, swaddles. Okay, this is a whole other video. I am not going to get into swaddles too specifically, but I'm just going to say, you're gonna wanna swaddle your baby we used these probably the most these are muslin blankets if these do not work for you to swaddle they work as a car seat cover as a stroller cover um, you can cover yourself up when breastfeeding with these or they just work as a blanket or something to set your baby on if they're on the ground so many uses for like blankets have so many uses so if you get a lot of blankets don't take them back find a use for them there are so many uses um Anyway, swaddles, that is one thing I will do differently with our next child. Um, I really want to try the love to dream a swaddle where their hands are like up here because Grayson broke free of like everything. We tried a lot of different swaddles. Anyway, not getting it into it too specifically. Um, also, just a regular blanket. Um, if it's in the winter months, you're going to want a plain blanket all the time in your with your car seat, your stroller, when you're taking baby outside. Um, they cannot wear the big snow suits in their car seat, just an FYI, so you're gonna want a blanket to put over them. Um, and then another thing, I was kind of going back and forth or on whether or not I wanted to put this in the video, um, but I think ultimately it's inexpensive, so you can decide. This is a car seat cover or a nursing cover. So if you're breastfeeding, this essentially, it's got an opening here at the top for your head, and then you just put it on like a poncho. It covers your breast and baby while you're breastfeeding, but also you can put it on top of your car seat um, to cover baby up when you're out and about so people don't stick their hands in there and touch your kid. Okay, last category for baby things that baby wears is a baby wrap. So I will insert a clip of me and Grayson um, in this, but this is so nice. This is by Kia Babies. I bought this on Amazon for like maybe 25 or 30 bucks. It's really soft, really stretchy material. It's a baby carrier, essentially. You basically put the baby in it, you wrap it around ya, um, and that they're nice and snuggled in. There are tons of videos on YouTube on how to do that. It's really not that difficult. I thought I was gonna struggle with it because people talked about it. I didn't struggle with it. It is fantastic for baby wearing. If you wanna just do the dishes, or fold laundry, you can have your baby snuggled up against you, they're gonna be comfortable, you're gonna be comfortable, highly recommend that. Okay, let's move on. Okay, now that I have talked forever, we are going to talk about the nursery must-haves. So, number one, a crib. You need some sort of crib and or bassinet for your kid to sleep in. Now, if you are just a minimalist and you want the bare basics, you don't need a bassinet. You can just use your crib, put it in your room for a few months, they can sleep in the crib, and then when they transition to their room or the nursery, um, you can move the crib over with them. So however you wanna do that, um, I know there's a ton of bassinets on the market. We used a pack and play, which was nice because we can still use it for him to play in and it's really, compactable, like you can fold it up really small and take it with you wherever. So that is nice about the pack and play. Um, however, Grayson was heavy and so he really started to like weigh it down pretty quickly. So there is that. Um, if I could go back and do it all again, I probably would have just done the crib in our room and then moved it over when he transitioned into his room. But whatever you wanna do, you need a crib and or a bassinet. 
The next thing you need for your nursery is a rocking chair or glider of some sort. Just a side note on this, you are going to be in that thing all of the time. Whether you're breastfeeding or bottle feeding or just rocking the baby down to sleep or going down for a nap or just hanging out in their room, you're gonna sit in this chair all the time. So you are going to want to make sure that it is comfortable for you. Um, obviously we all have different budgets that we have to follow. So do what works best for you. The next thing you're gonna need is a changing station of some sort. Now, you have people who opt to do just like the standalone changing station where like that is the sole purpose of the station is to change the baby. And then you have people like me who used the baby's dresser and that had the changing station on top. So whatever you wanna do for us, the, the changing station on top of the dresser worked best for us just because we had access to all of his clothes and his diapers and all of his creams and butt pastes and aquaphors and like that just made it really easy for us. So on that changing station I would recommend a wipe warmer of some sort that is going to be more comfortable for your baby. We use cloth wipes now so it works really well with our cloth wipes keeping them nice and warm and he it it's amazing like when they get older how much you can tell a difference in whether you use a wipe warmer or not. If we don't use the wipe warmer, he is a squirmy little turd. And if we use the wipe warmer, he just he's just chill, happy, he likes it. It's fine. It's nice a warm wipe, so I would re recommend a wipe warmer for your changing station and a changing pad a changing mat of some sort there's a whole bunch of different ones you can get we just got a standard very basic changing mat um i know that there's a kikaru changing pad which i would be interested in for my next kid but it's expensive um a lot of different options out there do what works best for you the next thing we're going to talk about is the diaper pail so you're going to need some sort of diaper pail I'll be honest with you, I don't really think it matters that much. You can use a plain trash can if you want. Um, we have the Ubi diaper pail, which means you don't have to use specific bags for it. You can just use a trash bag. There's the diaper genie, Munchkin has brand, like a type of diaper pail. As long as it closes in the stink and the diapers, I don't really think it matters that much. Okay, sorry, I for some reason I put this last thing away before I talked about it. Um, this is a baby monitor. We got the VTEC monitor with the double cameras. Um, these cameras have a microphone on them and then the cameras themselves move up, down, left and right. So if your baby moves around, um, you can always move the camera to see them. And then it comes with the monitor part of it um, you can talk to your baby um, through the cameras if you press the button. Um, you can watch both screens at the same time. You can toggle between them or you can just watch one. Um, there are so many different things that you can do with this. I would highly recommend this one in particular. I know there's a lot of ones on the market. I did a lot of research. It was important to us to have the two cameras so we could get different angles. Um, Fantastic, fantastic thing to have. Highly recommend that one. Okay guys, that is everything. If you are still here, thank you so much for sticking around. I know this was a very long video. A lot of stuff to talk about. Hey, babies need a lot of stuff. So I hope this was helpful to you. And yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. Have a great day.